welcome to this week's hashtag toe to toe. I'm delighted to say we're joined, as always, by Andy Clark and a lady who is a trailblazer for women's boxing. The reason, in fact, it, it's even here, Jane Couch. It's, it's lovely to have you with us this nice, week. Nice to be here. Thanks, Anna. You're, you're here because you've, you've written a book. It's tell, a final tell round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, I just decided to write a, a book about the story on how women's boxing got recognised and then um, about the court case and the fight that we had back in the 90s, Anna, and it's just really getting some good reviews and taking off and people are finding it fascinating, I think. It, it is fascinating <laughs> and it is a, an incredible journey and story. It started in, it was in 1998 when you finally got the licence, yeah, but well, it was so hard for you. I mean, you came up against so much resistance. Yeah, well, you know yourself being in a, a man's world, it's always difficult, but to be a woman boxer in a man's world when they didn't want it, it was even harder then. So you, you, you're trying to fight in the ring, so you're trying to do your training, and that's hard enough, getting prepared. But then the biggest fight's outside the ring, and you're just coming up against just against the old boys brigade really in it and in them days it was a lot worse than it is now still so what was it like just just for example well like say the court case so we'll go back to the court case and Dinah Rose QC I think she was 22 at the time she she represented me and then the board solicitor she said to him so if you was going on holiday and you found out the pilot of the plane was a woman like would you still go on the plane, would you still fly? And he said, not if she was on a period. So things like that, you know, and it was just, it just got worse and worse. And then it was like other promoters and other managers and even some of the boxers, it was like this disgusting. And it just, makes my blood boil even just sat here listening oh, to this. You just can't, I can't even believe that that, that was the wait attitude. To, wait and... till you read the transcript of the court because it's she, the, 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 the Barrister who represented me actually writes her own piece in there and even I was reading it back of some of the things that she asked the board and then they answered and it's it's just horrifying and, she, and they said well really though the, she can't have a boxing license because bo professional boxers the rules are they have to be stripped to the waist so my, so my barrister goes so it's down to a vest and he's like yes it's down to a vest and just because it was in their rule book that boxers had to be stripped to the waist then. That was another reason that they thought they could stop me making a living. And I was already, like I wasn't just a novice boxer at that time, I'd already been, fought on some of the biggest bills in the world, Naz, um, Lennox Lewis, Roy Jones Jr, Mickey Ward in Atlantic City. So some of the biggest shows in the world and, and they were still trying to come up with down to a vest or down to, Oh, you'll like this one. Um, they said um, again in the in the in the court transcripts. It's the that women are mentally unstable when the when they're ovulating. Oh. So when you do on your period, Hannah, stay away from any men because you're not, you know, you you're not mentally. Um you're unstable, that's what they said. I was unstable. It's just utterly crazy. <laughs> um, don't even get It's me funny started. though, isn't it? Um, we, we, we talk about Jane being a trail, trailblazer, but just how much has she done for women's boxing and, and the game itself? Well, quite simply, if, if yourself and Sarah Leslie as well, wasn't it? Yes, Diana Sarah Rose hadn't, hadn't pursued that court case and got, got it licensed, then people would assume that somebody else would have done it, yeah. but would they? We don't, I, we don't know if they would, and, and they were clever the way they did it too, because they went, they knew they were going to meet a lot of opposition, yeah. so they went down restriction of trade, yeah. was how they attacked it, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't even sex discrimination, it was a restriction of trade, because I was already, I think I was three, two times world champion yeah. then, um, and so they, they just threw the board the opposite way, because they thought they was going to go again on the sex discrimination, but it was... Andy's right, restriction of trade because I was, I was, you know, I was a well-established fighter by that time, and and they just wouldn't let me make a it's living. It's just amazing how different things were in America because I know. that scene in the '90s in America. Um, and you think about, about like Christy Marty, Lucia Riker, who you fought, you know well. Um, and they Jamie Clampett, so you well. had a couple of great yeah, fights great with Anne fight. Wolfe, and it was big. It was really big. It was big. big at that time, and also because. Because at that time, um, like ABC was covering our fights and yeah. it was on Showtime, so it was big out there. But what what we was finding was like 
I was less experienced because I'd gone over there from England with no amateur background because you couldn't even box as an amateur in England at the time. So I'd gone out there with zero experience, like four or five fights, and I'm taking on girls that have had like a good amateur career and they've had like 20, 30 fights in either kickboxing or professional boxing. So I was always like a bit out of my depth, but we didn't bother about the weight so much as well. It was like if if a girl was 130 to 140, we'd try and make the match in the middle just so we could all fight each other. And Holly Holm, I mean, Holly Holm started at 135 and then she went right up to 147 and then cracked it in UFC, didn't she? Mm -hmm. And Holly Holm was like the face of UFC after she beat Rousey, but in boxing, yep. she was a tough girl in boxing too. Well, do you know what, Jane? There's been loads and loads <laughs> of tweets coming in with questions for you. Um, none of them. Jazza Dickens, all we all know. Jazza, um, I love Jazza. Good question, this one. Uh, you would have been a superstar in this day and age if you could choose one. Or would you rather take superstardom or would you rather be the woman who made it possible for the rest? I would... To be honest, Hannah, I'd rather that somebody had gone before me because then you could, you'd sort of get an idea of how hard it's going to be. But, but yeah, no, I'd, I don't think I'd like to be boxing now because the career, my career was so hard as well. It's just even the thought of going back into a boxing gym would frighten me to death these days. I was going to say that. Would you, would you do it all again? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Definitely not. But again, I probably would if someone had gone before. Say you'd have gone before me, and I, and I was watching you like go through all the the stuff that, well, you that were I went pig, through. You, yeah, really? just a guinea pig, and then yeah, and and you were sort of frozen out and blackballed. So you had all that to deal with as well. So, like, if you, say you was here now and these was all trying to freeze you out and trying to be better than you, then how's that going to make you feel? Because you're, you're a good presenter in your own right. You're good at what you do. Don't make, he, he's not any better than you, or you're not any better than him, and you all work together. But in the boxing world, for me, it was just... You were like... Um, Is that frustrating for you? You were like a freak walking in, if yeah. you will. Like, you were like... Everyone looking at you and... Like, the the, the opposition, when I, when I kind of hear you talk about it and, and from interviews I've, I've listened to with you quite recently, is... It, it, it's hard to hear. It's, it's a tough oh. listen because you, I thought I knew your story. Yeah. But I didn't really because the, the amount of opposition that you came up against was was it's it's quite shocking actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's shocking. But it's not just you that doesn't know the story. I never told anyone. Like I couldn't say things in them days because I was still hoping that Warren, because Warren and Maloney were the two biggest promoters at the time. So even though they'd like just terrorise me and just give me all this grief for being a woman wanting to box. I was still trying to keep a lid on it just in case they did put me on the bill. It's so hard because it's so draining as well so when you're, draining, you're, I know you're getting it was. all that. Well, and like I said, that's why I wrote the book because as well, it's it was the effect that it had on me as well. And, and I just thought it'd be good, for, especially for this generation, to know. Well, this is a good one from Courtney, tying in with all that. Was it hard trying to box with so much negative feeling towards your career at the time? I guess when you've got that going on, it is hard. It, it is hard, it. but again, it, you've got to liken to yourself. Like people must say to you, well, look, you're, you're, a, you're in a man's world. All and, the time. And, yeah. and it, do, it just grates on you, doesn't it? And in the end, I just, I think I just, I'm very good at just blanking people out. Like I can just shut off from everything. and. And it's a good job I was, really, because when you can hear what's being said behind your back, like, even when I retired, people were telling me stuff and you think... But it's, it's just difficult, isn't it? It's really difficult. And, it, and if, you're, if you're good at what you do as well and you're quite outspoken and you're quite confident in yourself, then I think that makes it worse as well because you're a woman and you should be kept in your place, you know? But don't let these keep you in your place. <laughs> There's no danger of that. Don't worry. <laughs> She's fine, that one. Um, DJ wants to know, how do you think you would fare against the current generation of women boxers? Well, I think, I mean, I did all right against Holly Holm and Lucy Riker and Sue Mayanani and some real good fighters back in, in, in then. So, I, like, I, I wasn't a technical boxer. I just fought with my face and just walked forward. And if you couldn't hurt me, which... Not many people could hurt me. Like if Lucy Riker couldn't hurt me, and then I don't see many people nowadays that could hurt me. But 
it's different, isn't it? It's like saying, would Georgie Best get fingy with Ronaldo? You just don't know. I'm happy with what I did and with who I fought and the titles that I won. And it, I just, I, you've just got to be happy with the cards that you dealt, haven't you, really? Absolutely. Couldn't agree more with that. Um, Boxing Madman wants to know, Carissa Shields thinks she's pound pound number one in the world. Who do you think is number one? Um, for him, it has to be Katie Taylor. Well, Katie Taylor's got to be right up there. I mean, yeah. the skill set's unbelievable, isn't it? It really is. But there's, you know, there's other good ones. And we've just seen Serrano, Amanda Serrano. Yeah. I mean, seven weight world champion. Seven weight, seven different weights. So at the minute, she's probably just at that bit in front of Katie as well. And I don't know, it's they're they're all good. I mean, they're all they're all representing women, and you can't just need more of them, don't we? Just need more competition, but and also you need more. Like from England, because if you could fight, if you get more, say, like I think Chantelle Cameron's mm. number one for Katie Taylor. With the WBC, yeah. That'd she's be a really good fighter, Chantelle Cameron. Fight. And she's a really, really good really fighter. Really good fighter. Really, yeah. How do you think Jay would fare against this generation? Well, funnily enough, I was watching the, the, the first five rounds of your first fight against JB Clamp here on YouTube. So I watched them last night, and, and that is just. Uh, it's brutal. You do it? yourself down when you say you just walk forward and, and fought with your face. There's an element of that, but. but I was just you were far. you were there was a bit more to you than that. I, I find it hard to believe that that the current crop would be able to live with somebody like Lucy Riker. Mm. Honestly, I mean, just the no. power. No. Like, that was why she was so popular. Was that she had power? But, but she nobody, stopped people. Nobody and good, made good the fighters. distance with not her, you. Only, only well, me. Apart from you, yeah. Apart from me, I think it was you and one other. She says in the book, Lucy Riker says in the book, she's like, I've never met anyone as hard. She was like it in a brick wall. But but again, they might beat me on points. But as in, but I don't know, my fitness and my work rate was just. I mean, I like was you say, comparing with yeah, men. Of course yeah. you were, yeah. You're like, really good ones too. Good men, like. Comparing yeah. eras is, is always it's, tricky. It's so hard. It, isn't it, it is always it really is tricky. Hard. But it's, I mean, that, that 90s scene, um, and you were. I don't think you'll get that 90s no, scene. No, I again. don't Not think you will. Not with Horm, Riker. No, I don't think no. you will. It's, it's it, yeah, so the comparisons are difficult, but it's, it's very. You at 140 against Katie Taylor at 140. She's just moved up to 140. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, fight. that's a difficult fight to pick. Yeah, that's she'd be miles ahead in skills, and I'd just be walking forward. Well, probably. Delphine Pursuit, <laughs> that's what Delphine Pursuit did. That's what Pursuit did, what they, yeah. did yeah. And, and that was a that was a very close but, fight. But I don't. I wouldn't want to box any of them. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> You've done. I've done it. I've had enough. I'm over. I'm game over for me. <laughs> um, we're talking about female fighters that are up there. Um, Amanda Serrano. Uh, PJ Palmer wants to know, Katie Taylor doesn't want the heat that Amanda Serrano brings, um, she would get knocked out. Did you agree? Oh, it's hard to say, really. I mean, Serrano is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, she's just technically brilliant. But the thing is with Ser Serrano as well, she, she has got more power than a lot of the other girls. But, but Taylor's just so... She's just so skilled. Technically. Technically down, brilliant. Yeah. But then I thought people that are technically brilliant and have just worn them down and then you know sometimes you can't if you can keep that brilliance up without getting worn down then yeah but Serrano and Taylor's a good fight, it's a good fight but I think that is a really good fight I mean she's it's amazing how she's managed to go around all the weight Serrano ways. she fought super lightweight then she went down to super flyweight yeah. for her last fight how and that was in January that? then she's back up at featherweight to fight Heather Hardy good fight that good fight on that. the weekend that's going to have to happen, that fight, because it looked like it would happen after Katie beat her sister, Cindy, yeah. and she was ringside, and then yeah. it didn't. And I'd imagine they're, quite rightly, if your team Serrano holding out for his, the best The best player, yeah. But, but then it, the longer it goes, and I suppose the bigger fight is. Yeah, if, I think it does. Katie I think fights it does. Chantel, and then, yeah. I don't know if Serrano fights another big name. It, it'll just get bigger, and that's what you need, really, isn't it? You don't, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's about rivalries, isn't it's it? It's about the rivalry, yeah. I mean, in it's America, all about rivalry, isn't in it? America, we all was, we was all rivals, but we 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 had to fight each other. We had no choice. Well, Katie's out again, um, November the second, so not long to see her again. Um, Travis wants to know, 
I'd like to see women's boxing grow even more. What do you think uh, needs to be done to get women's boxing as popular as women's MMA? Like I said, it's just it's the depth. There, it's, it? it's getting there. It's just the it's just the depth of it. But there's, I was chatting to Stacey Copeland the other day in Manchester, and she was telling me that amateurs that are coming through now. She said, Jane, the the standard is right up there. Uh, now I wouldn't know, but Stacey mixes and goes down there, and spends a lot of time with the girls and she said the standard is amazing so we're just waiting for them to come through probably what else do you think needs to be done though to, to propel them forward and to give them well obviously I mean like you've got you, you're gonna have girls still struggling you know that are not on the big shows that, that are not mm. Katie Taylor so you've still got girls that are just starting out and it's hard for them so ticket deals and all the ticket, rest of it yeah, and, same and as it is for, for any same it is for any boxer though it's all about tickets it even was for me when i was box when i had a few fights in this country it was about if you could sell tickets so and that's quite a lot of pressure as well for a young girl to to have to, i remember selling about 2000 in bristol and, and you know counting the ticket money and someone had paid you and you're trying to make the money up for the promoters but it's just the just the general promotion. I mean, look at women's football now. To the promotion that they've had, and it's making the sponsorship people go to them. Was they probably haven't got much sponsorship. We didn't have any in our day, but I suppose it'd be hard for a woman to get unless you're on the big Sky shows, if, on a small so Steve Woods money, show. You probably wouldn't. It's all yeah, and it's yeah. like I said, it's down to how many tickets you can sell at the end of the day. That's what pro boxing is. It's a business can't go without mentioning Tyson Fury, of course, this week, you know, very well. Um, Captain K has said, Otto Wallen wasn't treated fairly. If Fury had given him the cut, uh, the fight would have been stopped. Do you agree? Well, if Wallen was cut, it would have been stopped. Mm. I don't know, you can't really say that, can you? I mean, even though Tyson was cut, he still won. He was winning every round. He wasn't... I, want to, I mean, it's a bad cut, don't it get me wrong, but cut, though, wasn't it? it was a bad cut. How did he get through nine rounds with that? But that's Tyson for you. He's a real proper fighter, him, isn't he? Oh, God, do, yeah. Do, do you think he got a bit lucky? I mean, no, th no, no, not necessarily, because I think I think in America it's slightly different. Referees are yeah. they'll let things go yeah. more there than yeah. they do here, and uh, I mean they're, they're humans as well, and it's difficult not to be aware of the I fact mean, that he's the home fighter and I mean, this is ref, top rank and the and ref could have stopped it he could have stopped and you it. couldn't have complained because the cut was that bad yeah but he, but he was able to protect it because yeah. he's that kind he's skillful and, and he's that skillful but, it. but he didn't stop it and tyson went on to win yeah. at the end of the day in in the history books it'll still say tyson fury won it'll yeah the w on it is it 50 odd stitches he had to have in his eye yeah it'll, it'll take a bit of healing oh, up that, that one will. he'll heal quick he'll be all right <laughs> <laughs> Jane, it's been brilliant having you on. We're Thanks going to talk for having more me. on the podcast later on, which will be available on iTunes. And book is out. It, it was out last Monday, so get to Waterstones or WH Smiths or online at Amazon. Brilliant. And you can get it. Thank you very much, chaps. We'll see you next week. Sky Sports. Feel it all.